Infectious by Elizabeth Forky. Read for you by Lee Boggs. Chapter 1 I am on my hands and knees scrubbing the faded gray linoleum kitchen floor when my last decent pair of jeans rips through at the knee. My shoulders slump as I let out an annoyed groan. My carelessness has unintentionally given support to her announcement at breakfast this morning. All my arguments turned to lies with a two-inch long rip. Maybe she won't notice. Fat chance, I should have changed into older pants for this job, but my older pants are as ugly as the rag I'm using to scrub this impossible floor. I look like a hobo circus clown in them. Their different colored patches and hastily hemmed seams are embarrassing to look at, let alone wear. Everything I own is old. I own is old. My limited wardrobe is a mismatched collection of hand-me-downs, most of which have holes and stains. My outfits span the last two decades and would have been worn by several people before me. Generational hand-me-downs. Homeless people wouldn't want to wear them. Who cares about looking shabby anyways? No one else is any better off. I'm fine blending in with the rest of the equally unkempt. But she doesn't care what I want, does she? I wish she'd take someone else with her. Not that she'd find anyone else more willing. The other girls my age who are more image conscious than me and dream of days gone by and less sobriety in their lives wouldn't dream of venturing out of the community for new genes. My only living relative, Aunt Co, is, of course, dissatisfied with what every other person in our little community has accepted. Aunt Colleen is actually my great aunt on my father's side. My dad's mother's sister. She took me in when I was 12, and I have been with her for four years. I love her, but I am dreading the special bonding time she has planned for us today. Auntie is a prim and proper lady, still quite attractive for age 65. She never married, and coincidentally, she never learned to play nice with the others. She holds staunchly the axiom, Cleanliness is next to godliness. This applies to the neatness of a person's wardrobe as well. I spend a lot of my time humoring her and pretending to agree with her. Less lectures that way. I say she's my only living relative as opposed to the other family members who are hopefully still living, but probably not living. So she's not my mom, but she's the next best thing. A shopping trip could actually be fun. God knows I'm tired of being cooped up. These are the things I tell myself as I lazily wipe at the impossible stains on the floor in front of the oven. My mental pep talk is an attempt to avoid the other more pressing thoughts that come with leaving our community. Mortal danger and grisly death. I'm trying to picture amazing shirts and new in-the-box tennis shoes that are so fantastic they are worth the risk of abduction and dissection. If I'm being dragged along, no matter what, it would be great if I could talk myself into some level of acceptance before she comes back with the car that will take us to our excursion. Drawing a deep breath that works its way back out in a long sigh, I decide I'm not convincing myself. I crawl under the table to scrub the section of floor and consider staying there hiding. I used to drape the old table with blankets and build myself castles and forts, imagining myself safe and hidden. Imagination was enough back then. Enough to escape from the trauma life had thrown at me. Auntie used to play along and pretend she couldn't find me. I don't think she'd be amused if I reinstated the old game today. Maybe I could fake the flute? The nagging thought that a spider could be lurking on the bottom of the table above me makes me twist around to look at the back of the light yellowy orange oak boards. No eight-legged monsters, just memories. My name is scrawled in childish handwriting and various colors of crayon. The End